Hallelujah. And we uh, are thankful and honored to be here once again today, Restoring the Branches Ministry. As always, we'd like to thank you and, and just uh, uh, praise Yah for all those who are, are watching uh, this video today. This is uh, part two of our four-part series. This is uh, Black History Month. We will continue to, to, to delve into the scriptures and into a past. Uh, as always, uh, a special greetings to the 12 tribes of Israel that have been scattered abroad. As we always say, as Shaul says, to the Yahudim first, then to the Gentiles, uh, to the people who have attached themselves to Christ. Once you have confessed that this is, the, this is your Redeemer, this is your Savior, then you must get in line with Him. Okay? You, once you get in line with Him, you don't call your own shots now. Amen. Right? There is a way to get back to God, and it is through the Messiah, it is through Christ, it is through Yahshua. But I cannot claim Yahshua and then not believe or move or groove as Yahshua did. That would make no sense. That means somebody is duping you. Okay. With that being said, we always like to thank everybody that's here. Uh, those that, that, uh, that are helping us labor, that are helping us do this work. It is, it is uh, always a blessing to be to see you, to lay eyes on you. And then to those who are watching from afar or some who are watching in close. Don't be scared to come in. All right. This is a this is a hospital. All right. This is a university. It's a hospital of Yah. It's a university of Yahshua Hamashiach. Okay. Because we all have to be able to grow in the fullness and the our full understanding and knowledge of Christ. This is a this is a requirement. It's in our New Testament to have this understanding and this fullness of Him. Um, but we are on now part two. Okay. Part two. Mistaken identity. Yah's hidden ones. Okay, Yah's hidden ones. Um, and I know my kids like this. Got the young brother's Spider-Man suit. And maybe the costume is in bad taste. And we got to understand um, that we're wearing a costume right now. We're wearing a costume. We are, we have been dressed by someone else. Okay, there is, uh, we're in someone else's clothes. Right, we've been stripped. And then we got redressed. All right. So we want to be in our right mind. We have to be in our right mind. So as we did last week, our objectives are to identify who are the blacks in America. Okay. And last week we, we did the definition, the, Webster dif, the Webster's dif, definition of black. All right. And it ranged from everything from the color of a dog and dirty soiled hands to your uh, to, to witchcraft and Satanism and all of course African Americans and people of color and all that was in one definition of black. Okay, so we wanted to identify who are the blacks in America, what does the Bible say about these blacks? These specific people. We're only using blacks, we're kind of being a little sarcastic here, uh, because this is the, how can you identify someone off of a color? You know, my, my son says it best, you know, that brown man over there. And it's very, it's very simple. You know, some people are brown, dark brown, light brown, so light brown you might call them red. All right, when I was in Texas, we had a phrase. Lorenzo probably heard it. Oh, that's a bad little yellow bone. Real light skin. You got your uncle red. Oh, uncle red's a red bone. Okay, so 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 we're the only we're the people that, that have to be identified a group as a color meaning black, which we looked at last week as the definition described by Webster's. So your skin color and Dark magic and all that other stuff. When did the heritage become black? Where are the origins and ancestral home of these blacks? Why is the black experience so shallow and vague? Does it affect our self-esteem? Mm -hmm. How do we heal? So these objectives, what we're going to cover throughout this whole month, um, we'll touch on all of them. Uh, the, the most important is how do we heal? Luckily, we have been saved and redeemed by someone who is a healer. He is a restorer. So he will be the end all of this situation. But we got to get our mind right. I have to think the way uh, I was created to think and not how I was programmed to think. I got to think how I was created to think and not how I've been programmed to think. Uh, John 8, 44 and 45, Ye are of your father, the devil, 
and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he bore not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. So the king of the Israelites makes this statement. He says, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Now it's one thing when we're, when we're talking about certain topics in the body of Christ or certain topics that is a lie. But what about the topics that we hold on to that we believe to be true? It's in my mind. So this is a, a question to us, but then those to people who are around us might not look like us. Right? How many times have we accepted the lies of the devil? How many lies of the devil have we have we accepted? How many lies of the devil have people accepted about us? And because I tell you the truth, you, so it's nothing for a believer to not believe when it comes to the truth. Because lies come from the devil. He was a murderer. He was a liar. He couldn't abide, he couldn't abide in the truth. So we want to look at some things, and we looked at a lot of things last week about how uh, a lot of the, um, the 17th century, 18th century thought of, of black people through, through science and biology and zoology and geology and, 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 and naturalist and, uh, and then obviously of which rolls over into the scripture which rolls to the Bible teachers and theologians uh, so on and so forth uh, Brother X I've had enough of someone else's propaganda at some point we gotta, we gotta get here I'm for truth no matter who tells it Somebody tell the truth. I got it. I got. It. I need. It. I don't care if you're white man, black man, Arab man, red man, uh, 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 whatever man. If you tell them the truth, that should supersede all things. The truth. I'm for justice, no matter who it's for or against. I'm for justice. We live in a land. We live in a time where people don't know how to define. Or interpret justice. If something happens to somebody, well, you know how they do. What well, was he innocent or was he? Well, that was part of the Torah study today about being a judge. So I'm for justice. What did uh, Dr. King say years ago? That injustice, uh, uh, if, if, if injustice occur, occurs, it's, uh, a, a, it's a crime anywhere and everywhere. Wherever there's injustice and you watch it happen and you don't intercede, right, you're guilty. Because if, 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 if injustice happens in one place, what's to keep it from happening somewhere else? I'm a human being, first and foremost. And as such that for I am, for whatever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. You can start a timer on me, please. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. This is Dr. Joy that grew sharp sister. Uh, does a lot of uh, anyway. The media has been a central vehicle for transmitting images to the masses. They control how the images will be displayed as well as who and what will be depicted. The media has been a powerful tool in shaping public perceptions of individuals and specific groups. The media images of African Americans are seared into the mental frying pan of its citizenry, swallowed whole, and eventually go unconsciously, keep that in mind, unconsciously, the social gut of America. That's uh, Dr. Joy DeGru, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, page 144 through 45. So things are played over and over, and you hear things over. And over and over and it just becomes a truth no matter what so if there is an atrocity if there is a, a shooting or a killing or a murder or a crime or something happens depending on who the victim is they're probably not a victim because in my mind I have a perception and I've seen it and I've heard it over and over and over and over and over again say it's propaganda now this first picture is not really propaganda this is that's fact but stemming from that images through older times 1700s 
uh, 1800s, mistrals, blackface. Uh, you know, I, I could, uh, we got the brother with the seven, with the seven in, in his two front teeth. You know, got the baby girl leading and jump, just going in on the, on, on, the, on the watermelon. These images and these visuals just over and over and over and over. So it has a twofold effect. One on you, mm -hmm. but also on the person not like you. It shapes how they think about you. And we see who the root is. The ugly one. But we just read in John 8 where you're, you're, of, you're a father of the devil. He was a liar in the beginning. He couldn't abide in the truth. Lies can't hang out with truth. They don't kick it. Light pops up, darkness flees. So it's saying in the scripture. When light Pops up, darkness can't comprehend, Come on. and then darkness flees. Mm -hmm. Light pops up and it shows what darkness is hiding and covering. Mm -hmm. It's an older picture I found. Say, now, th this is 1886. The Civil War ended when? 1860s, 1865, 66, somewhere in there. So, immediately after slavery happened, we had convict leasing programs. Lasted about 70 years. So there was jails and stuff like that before, but it was primarily with white people. Not a lot of white people, it was primarily with white people because all the other black people were in slavery. Right? I mean, everybody's kind of subjugated, under control, so that was your uh, criminal element. Now, once slavery ended, you have all these business owners and all these plant, uh, plant all these people that I need work. I need workers. So where do they find the workers at? But the propaganda is, hey, they're going to they're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. Right? So then we had the black code, different laws. You know, you're walking down the street, and if you do something, you say something, if, if you do anything inappropriate, I'm going to arrest you, and I'm going to slap you with a, with a fine that you got to pay. Well, obviously, there's no working going on. I don't have any money. So this was, was, was a, a propaganda, uh, and, it, and it justified, and these are, these are boys, right? these are young, young boys, um, and it justified uh, arresting black citizens or black people uh, because there was already a stigma that had already been planted. Okay. All right. Today, our time. Got the first picture up here with, with the men. Black men with the guns, and see the guys with the music, the music, the shooting, the anger, the rage. Whose idea was that? Is it was it Lil Wayne and idea? Is Lil Boosie idea, or is it? Because you're gonna rap about what the producers tell you to rap about. Only you gonna make money and sell records. Is if you talk about robbing, stealing, killing, sexual immorality. Just being a fool. You'll make money. But if you talk about anything positive or appealing to first aspects of hip hop, you ain't selling nothing. You ain't getting on TV. So the effect is violence for one, aggression for one, anger for the other, because this is what someone you look up to is doing, even though they're following somebody else's propaganda. Then the fact for our women, old Players Club line from that old movie, <laughs> you got to use what you got to get what you want. So now we have the men are violent, they're angry, they're out of control, and now the women have no respect for themselves. Right? The, 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 their faces and their bodies is now, this is what I, this is, this is what makes me me, not your mind. Mm. Not your mind. Not the mystery about you. It's the whole point of the veil for. But see, we're so far removed from how we used to be. We're so, so the the veil and the and the and, and the and the covering and what is beneath, what is what is behind the veil. I want to go behind the veil. But see, that, they, now now it's starting to get a little biblical. Because only one had the right to go behind the veil one time a year. So when the woman is behind the veil, only one can go behind. That queen got to have a king.
That queen, her secret place, her, 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 her secret places, she only need one high priest to go in and to administer righteousness. Just more propaganda. Old phrase, right? You reap what you sow. Job 4 and 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Even if I, as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way. And the multitude of thy mighty men. Hosea 10 and 13. So when we look at stuff like this, this makes sense. If something was sold, something was cultivated, then we get certain results. Right? We get certain, we get certain results. So if you plow a seed of wickedness, you should ex you exactly have a harvest of iniquity. Or have if you plow iniquity and sow wickedness, you reap the same. Stain of sin. Pistol action again with our young men. Gang action. Violence. Not understanding. Right? There's a tribal aspect there. Our young girls in the mall fighting. Young girls in McDonald's fighting. Young men in the street. So one of the purposes of this uh, presentation is that how do we heal? Because clearly these are wounds that need to be healed. And we don't have the luxury when we say things like, well, you know, when I hit 30, when I hit 27, things just slow down. Because at the rate that the world is going now, most won't make it that far. They won't make it. And the things that we did, I know that me and some brothers here are around the same age, things that we would have did, you know, in your 20s, now is amped up in their 20s. They're young, young 20s. Right? We was kind of out there. They weary out there. They weary out there. Saves fruit. See these guys right here? No, I'm sorry. Those are ladies. My bad. I thought, I'm, I'm sorry. My bad. Those are women. Queen Latifah started this phrase. Yeah. Remember Queen Latifah? Mm -hmm. Gay is the new black. And what do we do? We follow suit and we wear, we promote, and then we do. Look at all these Diddy and I don't know who that guy is. And then Kanye West, grown man. I'm a grown man wearing a skirt. Million dollar, six figure club. And the young folks are like, oh yeah, I'm going to be like that. So when we see our young men in stores out in public, this is why they are, because Lil Wayne does it. And the era before him did it, and so on and so forth. Somebody started it. We know it was him. Saints fruit. So James 1, 12 and 6, uh, through 16. Blessed is the man, sorry, it says this should be, should be the man. Blessed is the man that endureth the temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So even though we have these issues, uh, we still 
through the power of the word and the power of the, of the spirit, we should we can still say no. We can still say no. Okay. So the scriptures trumps over everything. The power of, of Yah Almighty trumps over everything. The mutation of sin, right? It's, it's one thing to talk about uh, lesbian and homosexuality and all these different kind of things, violence. But look at how things are evolving. Okay. Gay is the new black, the last great civil rights struggle. So now your media, as Dr. Joy talked about, the media is pushing this new gay blackness. Also, it's saying, hey, this is like the civil rights movement. Now, how many of the ancestors that were watered down, chased with dogs, beat upside their head, thrown in jail, would be as my as my mom and grandma would say, rolling over in that grave. Mm -hmm. But where there is no structure, right, where there is no law, now we got chaos. You can slide anything in there. Let's take it a step further. Time magazine. It's 2014. The transgender tipping point, America's next civil rights frontier. Why do you gotta attach everything to civil rights? So you got the brother on there that's really a sister. I mean, the, the, sis, the sister on there is really a brother. It got me confused. Got it on there. So they got the sister, but it's really a brother. Be like, hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Huh? Tip <laughs> the tubby, say in the back. Be tubby, say stuff. Uh, anyway. The, the, this is it's mutating right in front of our face. All right? So uh, we, th these are things we must address because they are so. Because light does what? It causes darkness to flee. This is, this is darkness. Remember some months ago I was talking about Saudi Arabia and how they had the, the robot and the robot became the first citizen, the, art of the artificial soul. Sophia, there she is. Sophia. And... This is where we're headed. So some weeks ago we talked about in Revelation, I talked about the, the, the beast, but the image of the beast. And how the beast gave the image of the beast power. And the image of the beast had all the people like, whoa. And all the people were to worship the image of the beast. Right in front of your face. But they've been doing that since, since the Jetsons. All the Star Wars with the golden robot and the R2B2 little guy. So they've been they've been just dropping little seeds, dropping little seeds, dropping little seeds, getting humanity ready for something else to come. Your Sophia again, what a wig. Sophia walked up and down the street. You'd be letting me know, excuse me, miss, how you doing? She'd turn around and start talking right back to you. You see where we where we're well, and I, I know this is a, a black history and things, but we also got to teach righteousness. We also got to have the soldiers on the watchtower ready to know what to shoot at. Amen. Evil ain't got a color. Come on. Just call what it is what it is. If you're a thief, it's a thief. You're a murderer, you're a murderer. You're a liar, you're a liar. This was a talk show, morning talk show. These two people are a host. This is a dude, this is another host. And that right there is Samantha, the pleasurable robot. Now on this show, he had her turned off because she might say something that's inappropriate on TV. Yeah, that's his pleasurable robot. That is artificial intelligence right there. See, you see what you see where we're going? So think about when Yah comes back for the children of Israel. And the children of Israel are supposed to be, we're supposed to be in a position where we're like, I've had enough of this place. I've had enough of this place, and I want out of here. But a lot of the 
children of Israel is going to be so wrapped up because the desires, the lusts of the flesh, it brings, it, it leaves the mark of sin. And what did James say? That what brings forth death, do not err, my brethren. So he's trying to justify, and his wife's there. His wife's there. She was talking, and uh, Japanese lady. Oh, by the way, who leads in this technology is Japan. Our good old buddy. We're going to fight for her. Kim Jong-un, you shoot a missile with Japan out. See, I don't know how to, it, it, this is global wickedness. This girl, lady right here, she looks normal. She is a person, all right? But she was on the same show, and she openly says that she has relationships, physical relationships with ghosts. Now, people say, oh, man, you, you know, whatever. She's on the show saying, I have relationships with ghosts. Now, we would understand that as demons or spirits. But it's so, it's so casual to talk about. Come on our show. I want to hear more about it. When we deep down the rabbit hole. I mean, can you imagine, Yah, the angels of righteousness and justice saying, get rid of them already. This is a, a regular girl, okay? She lives in Dane. I think she's Danish, right? Just got married. It's sweet, right? Sweet picture. Just got married. And, and her husband, oh, it's the horse. <laughs> I'm sorry. Her husband's the horse. Yeah, bestiality is legal. Legal, L-E-G-A-L there. Oh, don't worry. It's coming here. It's, it's, it's coming here. There was a report some years ago where a guy... Um, <laughs> broke into their neighbor's uh, I want you call it dog pen and was busted with the pit bull down at, at hot level. So best believe that we're going everywhere we're not supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So for the children of Israel who've been scattered and been dispersed and 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 Yah's coming, oh he coming. And when he comes it ain't going to be no friendly lamb. Simple little, little girl right here. Got her teddy bear. You know what the problem is though, right? That little girl is another artificial man-made doll. Pedophiles just eat that up. They actually created this to say, hey, this will help pedophiles, you know, help them ease their, ease their lust. All these things are real. 2018. Some of this stuff is old. <clears throat> so, you know, we'll kind of get back on to uh, false pretense. False pretense are others' reality. Okay? This is uh, Dr. Michelle, Ale Michelle Alexander, uh, the, her book, The New Jim Crow Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. Uh, very good book. Excellent work and um, her story is really good. She's a lawyer. She's a professor and a lawyer and you know just when you're in the system you're in you're in the system. And she says she had a young man, a young black man come in, uh, very frustrated, felt like he was being done wrong and she just kind of just worked like like everybody else, right? Assembly line, right? It's, uh, crime crime pays. Right? You can do crime and, and, and hustle but the actual criminal justice system pays. Like there's a lot of money circulating in that. So anyway, so she was saying that uh, he said something and it just made her think. And she was like, am I naive? So she kind of started doing research and looking to how many black men are uh, actually incarcerated. How many black men are on parole? How many black men have records? How many black men are frisked? Something I thought was very unique about um, the campaign was that there's going to be more stop and frisk in certain states. It's to stop and frisk. So more black men at a higher rate are, are stopped and frisked to see if they got drugs or whatever on them. So on and so forth. So she did a, a really good word, really good stat numbers. Um, and uh, you, you, you would kind of hope that when people do good stuff like this, 
that just, the only thing you're missing is Yah. So you can tie this to the scriptures. Okay. She talked about uh, 16, 1675, Bacon's Rebellion. Everybody, anybody heard of Bacon's Rebellion in 1675? Okay. These events in Jamestown were alarming to the planter elite who were deeply fearful of the multiracial alliance of bond workers and slaves. World, word of Bacon's Rebellion spread far and wide in an effort to protect their superior status and economic positions. The planters shifted their strategy for maintaining dominance, they abandoned their heavy reliance on indentured servants in favor of the more importation of black slaves. Page 24. So this man here was uh, had some money, he had a plantation, and he wanted to get some more land. But the bankers wouldn't give it to him. So if we understand who the bankers are today, they were the same bankers at this time. The same banking elite system. So he pretty much was like, okay, y'all got to wake up. Indentured servants, black and white, they got all the money, you doing all the work. They got all the money, you doing all the work. They got all the money, you, poor white, poor black. So this started a, this started a rebellion. Um, and at this point in time, in the early or in the mid 1600s, slaves were being brought to America, but it didn't really it didn't really increase to like around this time, 1675, 1700, it really really cranked up. But so anyway, so these people start rebelling, they start fighting. And obviously, the planter elite um, began strategies. So the strategy was to leave indentured servants alone. Okay, so the white people who were working and getting room and board, we're going to kind of leave them alone. We're not going to deal with them and only do slaves. Now, you still got poor white people there. But if you put in someone's mind that you're better than them, there's a, there's a, there's a barrier there, even though we both broke. Okay, I'm a slave and you ain't got nothing. You ain't got a, 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 a pot to use. But because of my skin color, because of my nationality, you're better and I'm, I'm worse. So she's bringing out these tactics that have, that have been used. Uh, here's another quote. You are kept apart that you may be separately fleeced from your earnings. You are made to hate each other because upon the hatred is rested the keystone of the financial depositism that enslaves you both. You are deceived and blinded that you may see how this race antagonism per perpetuates a monetary system which beggars both. So this is a uh, post- Civil War thing was called the, the, the Populist Party. Um, so before you, you know, we have a Democratic and Republican, but there was a Populist Party. It didn't last too long, but it was pretty much a white guy who was talking to the farmers, black farmers, white farmers. It was just like, look, man, they got all the money, you ain't got jack. You doing all the work, they getting all the money. Um, and and so, so, so I'm reading another quote she has here. Uh, the public symbols and constant reminders of black subjugation were supported by whites across the political spectrum. Though the plight of poor whites remained largely unchanged. For them, the racial ride was primarily psychological. Page 35 of her, of her, of her book. So, not only is there a psychosis, uh, a mind deal with us, but also with other people. But if I feel superior just because of how you look like, even though I'm dirt poor, I guess I'm okay. Well, once again, who is, who, whose propaganda was it? Oh, Satan. The one in John 8 and 44. Man, you were a liar in the beginning. Truth is not ill. 21st century, this is today. Anybody know who that guy is? Anybody remember something during the uh, prime, uh, think the, uh, political jump this past year. In response, Mr. King said, this old, this whole old white people business does get a little tired, Charlie. I ask you to go back through history and figure out where are these contributions that have been made by these other categories of people that you were talking about. Where did any other subgroup of people contribute more to civilization? This was a couple years ago. And then he asked, he asked a question, uh, the guy doing the interview, then he said, then Western civilization itself 
that's rooted in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and the United States of America. In every place where the footprint of Christianity settled the world, that's all of Western civilization. So he's saying, man, black folks ain't done nothing. Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and Dagum show over here in America. Everywhere Christianity went, we did. That's, that's a couple years ago. Oh, what, 2016? I'm sorry about the year right there. 21st century thought. So we can go all the way back to Carl von Linnaeus and John Frederick Blumenbach, and we talked about last week in the 1600s and 1700s and 1800s. It's 21st century. But the seeds, but that's what the book said though, right? Right? If you, if you plow wickedness, you reap the same. Oh, okay. This is real, like maybe last month. This is a, 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 the Kansas State rep representative, Steve Alford. He said, African Americans can't handle marijuana because of their character, makeup, and genetics. What were we talking about last week? About being... The thought in the in 16 and 1700s, 1800s, you're genetically inferior. You're not even a human. Remember, Charles Carroll, you come from the snake. We were made on day six, you're made on day five. You were the snake. So that concept, what is, did, did, did Dr. Jordan De, De, I can't, I'm butchering her name, De Groot say that it was seared like a mental in the mental frying pan. So we have a man who works in our government that says they're genetics. But they were saying that 400 years ago. We know who this is. This child used to be Cosby Show, right? Denise and, and Alvin and Denise finally got herself right. She went to Hillman College, Hillman kind of flunked out. And then she ended up finding the, the, the Navy man and he come eat clean clean cut brother and then he already got a kid and now she a stepmama and they come back and here here little sweetheart. Well what was her name? Olivia? Mm -hmm. Here's sweet little Olivia. Say the cutest little stuff and hug Bill Cox had great scenes together. And here she is in twenty two thousand whatever year that she said this. I'm tired of being labeled. Raven Simone told Winfrey, I'm American. I'm not African American. Explain that she does not know where my roots go to. I do not know how far back they go. I don't know what country in Africa I'm from, but I know my roots are in Louisiana. Which, by the way, Louisiana, when we went to our, we had a, a, a trip during our 10-year our, uh, anniversary, and the New Orleans Saints, the football team, their symbol, once again, this is the psychosis, that symbol is what they use to brand slaves. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> so the New Orleans Saints and, the, and all this stuff and yada 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 on your helmet and your chest is the same sear that was put on your ancestors. Because they was they, they'd be in Boulder right to Louisiana. Psst. French, yeah. Psst. Now you fight for it. That's that's, that's you can once again, the psychological. We're going to see what y'all said about this stuff. Because he showed what the plan. I'm Russell Louisiana. I'm an American. And that's a colorless people because we are all people. Okay. A misinformed child. and She's also into her own choice of lifestyle. How Israel will be recognized. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. And thou shalt be an astonishment. A proverb, a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. We talked about byword a lot last, last Sabbath. Uh, but an astonishment, shema, shema, a waste, a horror, appallment, right? I'm, I'm appalled to look at you. A proverb, proverb, mashal, mashal, a parable, a riddle. A song, a ingenious comparison of two things. This is what Israel would be when it comes to the nation. Wherever the Lord leads them, that's the key. Wherever the Lord shall lead thee, not you getting up and going on your own, 
but where He leads you. Okay. As we talked about last week, the byword, the Shina, the Shina, where you're always the constant butt of a joke. You're the taunt, right? You're getting pointed at, you're getting whatever it is, whether it's the minstrels or cartoons or whatever it is, it's 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 a point. And but 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 I ain't say this. This is just how Israel will be recognized, right? Among who? All nations. So, though you don't have a name, he gave you a name. You're going to be an astonishment. You're going to be a proverb. You're going to be a byword. And all the nations will see you this way. Not a few nations. All nations. All of them. Zakar. Right? To remember. To remember. I can't say it the way my wife says it. She says it real good. What is that? The what now? To making a present decision based on past facts. Making a, a, making a present decision based off past facts. So we should be making present decisions now. Turn back to Shabbat. Turn back to the festivals of Yah. Mm -hmm. Turn back to the customs you were doing when they found you in West Africa. And they identified you. They knew who you were. So we have to make a decision. One more time. Make a present decision based on past facts. We're going to look at some of the facts today. And it's sad. But when God says, my wrath shall be poured on you. Okay, it didn't make sense why it was so bad. This makes sense. So you start comparing. Well, man, who else had this? Well, you know what? I mean, everybody had slavery. and That's what people run to. But were you making bread off of me? Did you build your nation off of me? Okay. Three parts of the mind. Conscious, subconscious, unconscious. Uh, the conscious part of our mind. This is what people we most associate with who you are, because this is where most people live day to day. By, uh, but it's by no means where all the action takes place. Your conscious mind is a bit like the captain of a ship standing on the bridge giving out orders. In reality, it's the crew in the engine room below deck, the subconscious, and the deeper unconscious that carry out the orders. The conscious mind communicates to the outside world and the inner self through speech, pictures, writing, physical movement, and thought. So the conscious mind is in reality with the least of our brain that we use. Right? The conscious mind regurgitates what is stored in the subconscious and the unconscious. So when we get to Satan planting seeds and Satan's propaganda and things that Yah said, you're going to be a proverb and a byword and an astonishment to all nations. So not just, not just how other people view you, but how you view you. So how you view yourself, and then how the nations view you. These are the hidden ones. Because who would who would think who would think that you are Israelite? You are the people of God. I've talked about you, I've murdered you, I've justified you, I've made money off you, I've raped your women, I've burned your churches, I hung your daddy, I did all this stuff. And, it's, and, and as we said last week, <laughs> blessed be the Lord because I am what? Rich. Subconscious part of the mind. On the other hand, it's in charge of our recent memories and is in constant contact with the resources of the unconscious mind. Right. So we have, how many have heard that phrase? You I remember you remember what you want to remember. Okay, subconscious mind. Right? The sub, it, it, recent memories. Okay, recent memories. Unconscious mind. The mind is a storehouse full of all memories and past experiences. Both those that have been repressed through trauma. Very important. Very important. The mind is the storehouse of all memories and past experiences, both those that have been repressed through trauma. So any traumatic experiences you've had, 
No, I don't think about it. No, I don't dwell on it. Okay, but it's in your unconscious. It ain't going nowhere. And those that have simply been consciously forgotten and no longer important to us, it's from these memories and experiences that our beliefs, habits, and behaviors are formed from. So in reality, it's where you are unconsciously that determines how you act consciously. So I have a disdain for you. It's okay for me to be a certain way towards you because in my unconscious, it's been seared in there. It's been replicated and duplicated throughout however long in time. The unconscious constantly communicates with the conscious mind via our subconscious. And is what provides us with the meaning to all our interactions with the world. You'll be a proverb. I'm a byword, a proverb, an astonishment in all nations, where the Lord thy God shall drive thee or lead thee. Interaction with the world as filtered through your beliefs and habits, it communicates through feelings, emotions, imagination, sensations, and dreams. So y'all was like, yeah, I'm mad at you. Yeah, I'm going to drive you away. But I'm going to holler at you in your mind. Probably not this part of your mind. This part of your mind. I'll bring some stuff up. There was a fisherman, I'm sorry, there was an older man in uh, California, Los Angeles County, don't hold me that, where he's from. But the man uh, had an accident and went into a coma. Okay, that happens. People have comas. And when the man came up out of his coma, he's in the hospital. And he's talking. But he ain't speaking English. He a brother from, I don't know, L.A. or somewhere. And the doctors can't communicate with him. They don't know what he's saying. The one just happened to be rabbi was in there. He just happened to hear it, and he kind of stepped in there, and he's listening to him, and he says, that's ancient Hebrew, and he's saying that he's trying to go back to Galilee so he can go back to fish. He's a fisherman. Mm -hmm. He's trying to go back to Galilee. So Yah is going to unlock unconscious things. So weeks ago when we had that, August 16, 19, August 2019, he's going to do something. I ain't going to try to even say what he's going to do, but he's going to be, do something, and it's up to the children of Israel to be ready. Mm -hmm. That's a chart of the mind, conscious, subconscious, unconscious. No big deal. What did y'all say? The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Deuteronomy 28 and 28. Madness. Shigaun. Shigaun. If you remember David with the king of Akish, when David was going, acting crazy, drooling at the mouth, on the he was like, man, this man has gone crazy. That's what the most I said he's going to do to you. So those earlier pictures, folks just acting crazy. That's what he said. I'm going to smite you right upside your big old head with madness. Blindness. If I ruin blindness. What do we say? Uh, one of the mysteries that's recorded in the New Testament is that what? That Israel is what? Blind. The only problem is, is that nobody see you as who you are. Nobody sees you as who you are, and that's fine. Who do you see yourself as? Mm -hmm. Who do you see yourself as? And this astonishment is not the same astonishment. It's not Shema. It's another astonishment. Mm -hmm. So every time when we, as, as we, as, that's why it's important that we go through our Hebrew. And, we're, and we ain't got to be masters at it and go speak it and go do all this stuff. It ain't about that. It's about to get into the text and to know what he's saying. And how I need to prepare myself, my house. So when he says astonishment of what? The heart. Mm. Timanun. Timaun. 
Stupefaction. <laughs> what does that mean? To put into a state of little or no sensibility, benumb the facilities of put in a stupor. This is how I understood it. To be stunned by a narcotic, a shock, or a strong emotion. So Yah says that I'm going to make you crazy like David on the floor drooling and stuff and just crazy. You can't see. I'm going to put you in a stupor. And if you ever partied hard before and you've been drunk before, high as a kite before, you understand when you, you're sitting down and all of a sudden you stand up. Hold on, just give me a minute. That's what he said he was going to do. I'm going to stupefy your behind. Mm. That's what he said. He didn't say the same thing in Deuteronomy 28, I think 37. But Deuteronomy 28, and, I, and it's going to be of your heart. Mm. Of your heart. Well, you know, brother, some brothers, they, they do got, they got hard hearts out there. <laughs> What's hard in, in Hebrew? Love. Love. So we need to grasp heart in Hebrew. Because he's going to make an astonishment to the heart stupefy you. I can't move. I got a heavy, unbearable hangover. I, I'm stupefied. He's going to do it to your heart. So heart, lev. Figurative speech for feelings, but also intellect. The inner man, mind, heart, will, understanding. Your brain. Every imagination of the thoughts of the heart. The thoughts, imagination, heart. So for Hebrew understanding for heart, heart and mind is synonymous. They go hand in hand. So when Yah says... I'm going to stupefy your heart. He's talking about here. Your mind. Also your heart. Because lev is used here. So I'm not saying not your heart. But for sure your brain. Brain dead. Another aspect of heart is le, uh, uh, levav. Levav. Inner man. Mind. Will. Heart. Soul. Understanding. She communed with him of all that was in her heart. Right? Talking about the Queen of Sheba when she went to Solomon, 1 Kings 10 and 2. But she didn't com she communed everything that she what? That she knew. Because she was cold. She wasn't no dummy. She was real smart. The Ethiopians have the longest track record of their kings. From the beginning to the Solomonoid dynasty, all the way to the to the Hale Selassie family until like the 1960s or 70s when they got ran out of Ethiopia. They, so she communed with him everything that she knew. She was like, oh, okay. He hard like that. Her merchant come back and said, man, this, this guy up here in uh, uh, Jerusalem, man, he, whoo, and he got money. Well, I got money too. And I got to understand too. I'm going to go test him with hard questions. Solomon laid it out. Now, that, that just let you know right there, brothers, if you really want to get to a woman, have a sharp mind. Amen. Because that's what Solomon had. That man had a sharp mind. <laughs> she was like, okay, I'm going to travel for this man. So, grasping heart in Hebrew, heart and mind is synonymous. So, when Yah said, I'm going to make your heart astonished, I'm going to stupefy your mind, and you can't think. And I'm going to slap you with madness. What else he say he's gonna do? And you can't see. So you got slap with madness, uh, madness. You can't see, and he stupefied you. This is the. Uh, this is from uh, Dr. Joy's book again, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So this is from their. Uh, this is their stuff. This is legitimate stuff here. Okay. So because we because we want to talk about trauma. Because remember, trauma is stored in the uh, unconscious. The, the, the real memories, the
the, the, that recollection, things that you might not think about, it. so things that have happened to you that were deemed as trauma. You know, I saw this, I witnessed this, this happened, this happened to somebody. I was like right there, where I was like two people away from something. It's in your, it's in your unconscious, right? Trauma ain't going nowhere. A serious threat or harm to one's life or physical integrity. Okay? A threat or harm to one's children, spouse, or close relatives. Sudden destruction of one's home or community. Okay? Uh, when my mother and stepdad, when, when, our, when our house I grew up in, trailer burned down, that was traumatic. Right? When me and my mom were in the middle of the street and mom just screaming, just shouting, just hollering. Traumatic. Trauma. Never forget it. Right, it's, it's always stored. If you don't think about it, you know we've all had these kind of things. Seeing another person injured or killed as a result of accident or physical violence, that causes trauma. Learning about a serious threat to a relative or a close friend being kidnapped, tortured, or killed, it also causes trauma. Stressors experienced with intense fear, terror, or helpless, helplessness. So, when soldiers go to war and they come back, this is how they are are diagnosed for having PTSD. When they go over the war and they, and they come back, right? Look at all these things. I didn't get killed, but my man got killed. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing the shooting. We blew up a building, and I know the people's gone. Stressor and disorder is considered to be more serious and will last longer when the stressor is of human design. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing if they didn't do it. It's another thing if you're like David and them, and all of a sudden that angel in there. But if it's something like a man like me, a human being like me, all these things cause trauma or PTSD. P PTSD. Oh, sorry. The legacy of trauma. Now, and I wanted to find trauma because we looked at how when Yah says, "I'm going to stupefy." your mind I'm going to do things to your heart or to your mind and when we look at the things that are, have been stored in the unconscious traumatic events is what, is what the definition gave traumatic events are stored here we got to ask a question do we have a legacy of trauma we looked at all these definitions look at this a serious threat or harm to one life of physical in, in, integrity can you imagine minding your business in Benin or Ebo, or e I'm, I'm places off in Africa, different tribes, and your and your village get raided, mm -hmm. and now you carry you cart it off somewhere, and you wait, and on the journey, a mom and her little boy died, and you know what they did? They took the chains off of them and threw them in the field, and you know what happened? A lion came there, mm -hmm. the hyenas came, the vultures came, and you saw that. You know what that is? Trauma. A threat of harm to one's children. Families got split up, didn't they? Trauma. This is before you get on the boat. Then you get on the boat. The hardest part was on the boat, the middle passage. Then you get off the boat. Then you auction and you washed up and you auction. So, so trauma, 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 trauma. And Yah said, I'm going to stupefy your mind to wherever I lead you. I'm going to slap you with madness. As a result of centuries of slavery and oppression, most white Americans in their thoughts as well as actions believe themselves superior to blacks. Remember, the unconscious mind. This, this dictates how you believe or how you act. Of greater import to many African Americans unconsciously share the same belief. So it's twofold. Right? We act as if we're inferior. We do things with an inferior mind. Right? Page 116 of her book. Uh, 246 years of protracted slavery guaranteed the, pros the prosperity and privilege of South's white progeny while correspondingly relegating its black progeny to a legacy of debt and suffering. Trauma. Over and over and over and over. The legacy of trauma is re reflected in many of our behaviors and our beliefs. Behaviors and beliefs that at one time were necessary to adopt in order to survive. 
Okay, so this trauma and the way we handle it and the way we accepted it, now I'm this now it's necessary. I have to adapt to it in order to survive. Yet today, uh, serve to 